Hello, today we're going to make some UV maps for this. And we're going to put a UV map right on this surface so that we can put a picture on it, basically. I'm Dr. Kevin Kirk. Welcome to 3dtopic.com. Now I have here a basic lofted shape. And let's take a look at this. Just a basic cylinder. You can use a cylinder. You don't have to have a lofted shape. But this technique is good for any kind of basic shapes. Spaceship, a missile, pencil, whatever you have. This is a basic cylinder, and here's how to make a UV map. So I've made a picture in Photoshop, and I want to put this on here. Now this is just a regular shape, as you can see. And if I render it out, I've just got a basic color to it. There's nothing fancy about it. So I have my typical shape right here. Before I begin, I want to be able to see my picture in this window. So I want to make sure it's going to render OK. So I want to do a render setup and make absolutely sure my renderer is mental ray. When that's set, all good. Now to put the picture on, it's a pretty simple process. I'll select my shape, make sure that's selected. Then to the modifiers, click one of the modifiers and add from the list down toward the bottom. UVW map. UVW is kind of like the left, right, and over. And it draws this little line. This is actually where, I don't know if you can see it, there it is, the little red line down here. And it's visible at the end of this too as you can see. And that's how it's putting the map on there. Now in order to see what the map is, you've got to actually apply a texture first. So let's go in and get a texture. And I'll just drop on a texture. Now I'll change this texture to a standard. So I'll click here and just grab a standard texture. And I'll put the diffuse channel map on there. That's going to be a bitmap, which is a picture. Diffuse channel is just the color. I already have a picture here in mind, so I'll just drop that on. And when I render it, it's going to be a mess to begin with. There you are, you can barely see that. Let's zoom in, see if I can get any more details. Well, it's pretty bad. Okay, so I put a picture on here. This is actually a black fading to red. And right now you can't see much. So let's play with it and see what we can do. I have this UV map on here. Let's open it up and see what we've got. Now it's set for planar mapping, which means on a flat, I'll set it to cylindrical which is the shape we have here. Now it sets it up like this, which is not the way we're going. You can see it's all red here. Well, it's set a wrong direction. So we have to change the direction. Fortunately, we can do that in alignment right through here. Let's see, this is not right, obviously. This is. This one is not, as you can see. So one is going flowing with the object. Now, it's not going to be right to begin with. But we have a fit button. If you click that, believe it or not, it fits. Now for a simple shape, it's going to fit perfectly. More complex shapes, say fins of a rocket or something, it'll kind of fit well, and you get to play with it. There's another kind of complex mapping where you unwrap it, but this is just to put it on a basic shape. It'll work with most basic shapes. So let's see what happens when we put that on there. I'll hit the F9 again, and suddenly I've got the right shape. Basically, I wanted this part fading to black, or the black fading to red. So I pretty much have what I wanted. Let's try that again, and that's what I want. Now I have words I want to appear on there. And I can go in here, because obviously they're not on there, but they're on the other side. So I can find that out. Oh, if you want to view what you see in this window, check this little box right here. It shows standard map and viewport. And I'll show it. See, we have the red going to black. It's actually a great chance to show you how the alignment can change here and see how the mapping changes with that. So this is the proper mapping and that's the result we get. Now I want to move this over a bit. So I'll take a look at my offset. And I offset either the U or the V. That means moving it, basically moving the picture on the object. So I'll offset this some and it moves it. I'm not seeing much of a change. I'll render just to check. And it's probably not the one to do, so I'll set that back to zero. I'll offset the V. See if I could have changed on that. Ah, okay. You see the V map is that one, so that's definitely not the one to do. So it must have been the U map. The V set this, as you can see, like so. That's not the one I'm after. So it must have been the U. I must have moved that too quickly, so let's put that back to zero. And change this again. Bring this up, see what we can do. There's the words. Alright, so now I have the words. Just by scrolling along, basically it's taking, think of the 
literally wrapping a picture on it and just kind of rotating that picture until you get what you want. And there we have I had this fading from the black to the red. And I've put words on it, as you can see. So it's a very, very basic way to do 3D mapping. All right, coming up is complex stuff. And that's actually doing unwrapping of the object to paint on it, pretty much literally. But for now, this is how you do basic UV mapping for squares, cylinders, circles, and so forth. Have fun!